Now, in this session, we are going to see the swap function uh, for the hardware synchronization. Swap is having a definition, swap the contents of two words. Here, this is a definition of swap function. We have two Boolean variable A and B. As I said, a Boolean value means it can have only two value, either 0 or 1, or I can say it as true and false. And initialize with a temp value, a temporary register. Temporary register. So, let us see if a uh, value of A if initially is true and value of B is initially false, what does this function do? The first line boolean temp, temp is a local variable, temp has initially the value of A. So, A, A L F A is true and A will be having the uh, value of B. Now, what is the value of? So, after execution that is this is line number 1, line number 2 and line number 3. So, after execution of line number 2, A will be having the value of B which is false. So, A will be having false and after the line number 3, B will be having the value of temp. What is the value of temp? Which is the value of A that is equal to true. So, B will be having the value of A that is true. So, as this next case if you take A is false and B is true. So, same thing will be repeated boolean temp is equal to A, a is false. So, temp will be storing A value. A will be having now the value of B the pointer B. So, these are addressed to a particular memory. So, whatever we have in a memory is pointed with star A and star B and those will be storing these values as per I have shown as case 1, case 2, case 3 and case 4. So, uh, B will be having the value of A. So, B is true. So, A will be having the value true and uh, after the uh, line number 3, we can see that B will be having the value of term which is false. So, taking these two cases itself, I can say that what happens basically after this swap function or the swap definition uh, execution, the a, a value will be transferred to B and B value will be transferred to A. Exchange of the values in A and B happens. So, A value will go to B and B value will go to A. So, a swap function or an exchange function is defined over here. So, in this case false and false both will be false itself and true and true both will be true. So, with the A definition of this, let us see how a process implements the swap function. This is the implementation code for entering into the critical session that any particular process has to execute. So, in order to enter into the critical session, if you remember the base, it has to have a entry session code or acquiring lock entry section code, enter into the critical session, then perform the exit section code. So, in this particular code, this part is the entry section code that is acquiring the lock and once it enter into the critical session, this becomes the exit session co uh, code, the releasing the lock part. In this particular code, we have a global variable lock, variable lock. This is seen by all the process who is competing for the critical session. It is a boolean variable. It can either have a value true or false and every particular process has its own a uh, local variable key. It also is a boolean variable whether it can have a true or false. So, let me explain with uh, functioning of critical session code using swap function. Now, the main feature over here is when this swap function is executed. Now, when this swap function is executed, when exchange of lock and key happens, the key value if it is equal to false, then only it enter into the critical session. Otherwise, it loops over here itself. It will be in the entry section code itself. It will be again redoing the entry section code. So, let me take an example where I am trying to exit this, uh, execute this. Whenever I execute and when I call the swap function, function it will be calling the basic swap boolean pointer a boolean pointer b if you remember and after executing that particular function a value will be a and b value if it is having this will be swapped. So, whenever this is executed. So, here I said I have a variable key and log swap and a and key whenever this swap function is called it will be going and calling this particular function swap is called over here. It will call the function swap boolean star a and star b where the log is having the value of a 
and k will be having the value of b. So, I have replaced wherever a is there, I will set it to lock and wherever b is there, I will set it to key. Okay. Now, let us start with this. So, initialize the lock value with false. Let me take two process P1 and P2 competing for critical session and let me start with P1. P1 set its k is equal to true. So, k is equal to true. While k is equal to true, it is true. There is no semicolon. So, it enter into the swap function. Swap and lock and key. It call the function swap uh, boolean a and boolean b and it checks the value of lock and key and it swaps it. So, lock value is initialized to false. So, here initially this was the condition. So, key is equal to true and lock is equal to false. So, after swap function, what will be the lock and key lock will be set to it it was initially false now the lock will be set to true and key will be set to key will be set to false so i said thus if the key is false the process can enter into the critical session thus p1 enter into the critical session now according to our uh, critical section problem solution the first requirement says that mutual exclusion should be maintained that is process p1 when it enter into the critical session it should not allow any other process competing for the critical session to uh, enter into the critical session or modify the shared variable so now let me take that p2 is trying to enter into the critical session so from here when this is executed some way here p2 is trying to enter into the critical session so so, key of P2 is set to true. So, key of it is a local variable. So, key of P2, this was key of P1 is set to true. While key of P2 is equal to true, okay, it is true. Swap and lock and key. Now, what is the lock value? True. What is the key value? True. So, lock value was true initially. So, true and true will return me after the swap function lock is equal to true and key is equal to true. So, it gives me an output where key is equal to true. What did I mention here? If the key is equal to true, it will not be allowed to enter into the critical session. Thus, P2 is blocked from entering into the critical session. It cannot enter into the critical session. Thus, mutual exclusion is maintained. So, the first requirement is met and when can P2 enter into the critical session? If P1 finishes its critical session, then it sets lock is equal to false. So, now the lock becomes false and now if P2 tries key is equal to true, what will be the lock value now? Lock is equal to false and key is true. So, key is true and lock is false, the key becomes false and thus P2 can enter into the critical session. So, once P1 comes out of the critical session, once it finishes the critical session, setting the lock is equal to false, the other process who was competing for the critical session could enter. So, we have clearly seen how the mutual exclusion is been maintained and P1 does not block P2 from entering the critical session if it is functioning in the remainder section. So, after the critical session, when it is performing the remainder section, any other process who want to compete, who want to enter into the critical session can enter. So, let us see the second requirement is maintained which is progress. I have already explained here itself the progress happens. So, here let me say P1 enter into the critical session as I said P1 enter into the critical session and set its after finishing it set its lock is equal to false and then perform the remainder session and somewhere in remainder session it uh, just want to preempt itself or it want to sleep. Now, P2 want to enter into the critical session, P2, P2 sees that the lock is equal to false, whenever the lock is false, the key value will be false and now P2 can enter into the critical session. After finishing again, it sets the lock is equal to false, it enter into the remainder section. Now, P1 is going for sleep and it does not want further to participate in the critical session and P2 once again want to enter into the critical session. Can it do so? It can because lock is already set to 
to false by itself and again when lock is false the key will be false in this particular condition it can enter into the critical session again it sets lock is equal to false again p1 is going on sleeping and once p2 finishes if any other particular process when it is functioning in the remainder section it has already set its lock to false so any other process p3 p4 p5 etc can enter into the critical session thus progress happens only those process who want to compete for the in the critical session will be participating p1 will never try back to enter into the critical session so here also progress is maintained the third requirement was bounded waiting bounded waiting so the first condition is satisfied the second condition is satisfied the third condition is the requirement of bounded waiting where if one process want to enter into the critical session and after trying for multiple times it should be forcefully allowed to enter into the critical session the multiple times is the number of times of its attempt so let me take here example of p1 and p2 itself p1 comes here key is equal to true lock was initially false then uh, this condition when lock is false uh, it sets the key is equal to false it enter into the critical session and after performing lock again is set to false and it goes to the remainder session when it is performing remainder session p2 is asking for critical session or it want to enter into that is competing for critical session but p1 also want to enter into the critical session so after remainder session p1 sees the lock is false it can maybe it is a priority process it again enter into the critical session because lock is already set to false whenever the lock is set to false you can see that key becomes false and it enter into the critical session again it does all these things it comes through the remainder section again it want to participate in the critical session so again it will come again it will do so p2 has tried for the first time second time the third time also p1 enters it attempted third time again it goes the uh, fourth time also p2 fails in entering the critical session n times also if you try if the priority or p1 uh, has has competed and it has got the chance it will be going on entering into the critical session blocking p2 to enter into the critical session if it was sleeping well and fine but if it was trying for an attempt and the priority was given to it p2 get blocked or there is no bounded waiting limit that p2 attempts are been trying so the condition is failed i can say the bounded condition is not maintained over here so thus we can see that in a process synchronization using hardware we have two particular hardware instruction test and set as well as swap both these particular instructions although it maintains mutual exclusion and progress it does not maintain the bounded waiting